Yo, this is Deontay the Bronze Bummer Wilder, heavyweight champion of the world, and you're watching Real Fans Real Talk. Face facts, what up, what up? RealFansRealTalk.com Where Arthur Diamond's trip young and intern Tom For the white and black fans Asia to Manhattan I'll get all my facts from my bro Mark the Stats Man If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand Sports, gossip, all the hot topics RealFansRealTalk.com Got it, they got the hottest bloggers It's Jeremy Linhart We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first I'm talking about the latest, I'm talking about the greatest Go check out the art even tell a neighbor, tell a body sent ya. From spring to winter, tune in should be the only thing on your agenda. Certified cosign, you know what I'm about, son. Real fans, real talk.com. I'm out one. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk. Real fans, real talk.com. Real fans, real talk.com. Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another live episode of Real Fans, Real Talk. Oh man, it was a great week. Great weekend. The whole crew got out there to that uh, Deontay Wilder fight. Myself and the stat man, I felt like we was battling with every Polish person in the tri-state area in the stands. That was kind <laughs> of a civil war for me, by yes. the way. So. But it was all in fun. But we got a whole lot to get into today. But uh, let me let me introduce uh, my co-host to the right, stat man. What's going on? Great to be back. Another live episode of Real Fans Real Talk. As you mentioned, the Civil <laughs> War. My background is of Polish descent. I was born in Brooklyn, but all the Polish people out there uh, rooting against Deontay Wilder. Uh, but, you know, Deontay, Real Fans Real Talk family. A family comes first. USA, of course. So a little bit torn there, but it was a great fight. Ninth, <laughs> ninth round rock uh, knockout. I texted trainer Mark Breland to let him know we go hard in Brooklyn. We expect nothing less than a knockout from mm -hmm. him. And went nine rounds, so I, was, I wasn't worried, though. I knew the knockout was coming, and uh, the right hand dominates. But, of course, uh, upgraded off the bench into the starting lineup, uh, the one and only uh, Ladybug uh, in the building. What's going on, Ladybug? Hi. Hey, hi guys. It, it's weird. I'm, you know, they always save me for the end. So the fact that I get to save the best for last. Listen. I know. I don't know. I don't know whether it, is is this a good thing or a bad thing? <laughs> Are you guys trying to here? get me out quick? Is that what it no, is? No, we want we wanted you to start because you know the fans have been asking. They said, "Yo, can y'all give Ladybug a little bit more time?" Oh, all so right. So like, all right. I, I, we're gonna, we're gonna bring everybody that minutes. watches. Yeah. <laughs> what player in sports, you know, complains about getting more No, minutes? I didn't you know, complain. <laughs> You know, You're in the starting lineup, that's the big time. I'm blessed. Only, I'm only, blessed. That's uh, it. I'm blessed. Only on Real Fans, Real Talk, only with Ladybug. I but I will say this, um, you know, we got we got Ladybug up here in the starting lineup, like Statman said. But I do want to congratulate Ladybug last Friday. Uh, her radio <laughs> show, the pregame, yes. debuted on Soundcast FM. Yes. And uh, her, myself, uh, the Statman... Uh, Stush, Zena, you know, a couple others. We went out after, you know, after the uh, after the, the, the pregame was off. And uh, we wound up in a little little bar that had a little <laughs> pool table in it uh, oh, after. You see, and, I knew he uh, wasn't going to let this. Up, like, this uh, you know, I'm just saying, there's listen, a lot of we had, to talk we about had this, but this, but pool is sports. You know, so we had a little match, and I'm not, I don't want to say who lost because, you know, we always go kind of go back and forth, you know, at the, in the bowling and whatnot with myself and the stat man now. And myself the and Ladybug were paired up dominating and completely. You see, I, I took didn't a risky have to shot say anything. And the table. Listen. He's trying to make it. Did you it's, even sink one it's ball? Not, trip? It's not, it's oh. not, it's not, oh. it's not how you, it's not how you start. even sink one ball? It's how you finish. Did you sink one ball? You know, That's all I'm and at the end of the day, we left with a W, okay. we left right. with the championship. You know, Statman, Ladybug, you guys were good, but you did not win. What happens is when you, you know, sink the eight ball in before the other balls go oh! in, that's called an automatic <laughs> loss in the game of yeah. pool. That's what happened. That's I was actually, no talent, I was actually, ball, I was surprised. Exactly. And I, was brag surprised. About it on I was surprised. I was surprised. I was surprised that, you know, it wasn't, it wasn't Ladybug. <laughs> I thought Ladybug would do something like that. You um, see, I, 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 I
he the is spilling man, the beans. Stat man, you are not the MVP. You lost the game for your team. <laughs> and you know what? It's, it's all good, though. You know, when, it's sounded like a rematch. On, on, it's okay. We're going to have a day, rematch. It's all right. We're going to have know, the fans we'll, we'll do that. see the rematch. You know, maybe we might. We might We might do, do something like that. We might like have that. to do that. And, uh, and, yeah. and, and have it, you know, have that thing going. But it's all, listen, it's all good. I will take the W to the victor goes the spoils. You know, so shout out to, you know, to my, my teammate, uh, Rosie, too, because she was definitely, you know, in the building with us. And, you know, we got the win. But we're going to jump into some, some sports. We're going to jump into the professional sports right now, you know, because we did mention that we were at the Deontay Wilder fight Saturday night. Uh, first of all, I do want to shout out to, to all of the Polish fans because they definitely showed myself, Statman, Pop, and Cliff a lot of love in the stands. If y'all seen the Instagram, we got the picture, you know, with us and, and the Polish flag and a couple of the Polish fans. Some of the classiest fans because, you know, Statman was probably the loudest person in the building. I, I must say that. <laughs> And he was trying to compete with about 2,000 <laughs> Polish fans who were uh, uh, voting, go, pulling for, for Spilka. Probably like 10,000. But it might have been more than that, yeah, you know. But, um, you know, when, when Deontay got that knockout, you know, a couple of the fans, they came over, they congratulated us, shook our hands. Like I said, we took pictures afterwards. So it was just a, a great, great night. The fight was amazing. Deontay was like Wilder, a celebrity yeah. in the crowd there, just, <laughs> yeah. little, just from the loud voice alone. Yeah, but. everybody's just looking like, who is this guy, <laughs> Back here. Well, they knew it was the stat man. Well, I mean, well yeah, you know. know. Well, well I mean, once saying. they when they when they turn around and know the views are up in Poland. Too, oh yeah, definitely, oh, definitely all up in Poland. Got the international so, audience out there. You know, but. so that was that was a, a great great uh, experience, and that right hand of Deontay Wilder is you know something to be feared in you know, that heavyweight Arthur division. Spilka is no slouch. It was uh, he Poland still looking for their first Polish born heavyweight champion. Uh, mm -hmm. the, didn't happen, uh, unfortunately, for them, but uh, he, he's definitely no slouch. He put up a great fight. Just, you know, one punch makes all the difference uh, when yes, it comes it to does. boxing. So caught him on the chin while throwing a punch of his own and uh, just hit the floor. Was unfortunately carried out in a stretcher, but uh, he was he regained consciousness and he was, uh, you know, he, he, he's okay. And Deontay Wilder showed a lot of class there. Uh, going up to him after the fight and, you know, obviously showing some concern. Uh, they took him to the Lutheran Hospital for some uh, precautions. Obviously better mm -hmm. to be safe than sorry, but he was fine. And uh, th then we had some drama uh, out there. We thought it was the WWE, and we, we got a family <laughs> question about this. Uh, Richard from Brooklyn wrote in, what do you guys think about the, you know, after... Uh, a show performed by uh, Tyson Fury, who, who is the other heavyweight champion of the world. He, he recently upset uh, Klitschko, who, who had a, almost a decade reign uh, uh, with the heavyweight title championship. And um, he, is, he now holds all the other belts, Deontay Wilder holding the WBC belt, which is the original heavyweight belt. And uh, some drama there, kind of trying to promote the unification match. Uh, but Tyson, my, my opinion, it's not the WWE, and that's exactly what Deontay Wilder said. This is not the WWE. <laughs> he goes out there, he goes in the ring, and he starts talking, and he even goes and stands on the turnbuckles, just like the WWE wrestlers. Yeah. So, I mean, it's a joke. It, and it, 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 one thing I, I liked about it was that, you know, as much as we were going back and forth with the, with the fans during the fight, I think everybody in the yeah. audience, like, unified when Your Tyson enemy is Fury, 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 Yeah, enemy. exactly. You know, I, I just thought it was, he was a clown completely for, for doing that. You know, I mean, because there's no, there's no reason for all of that, and I, I, I can't wait to see uh, this fight. You know, we spoke about this actually with Deontay Wilder. You know, I, I, I spoke to him about a couple of the, the guys that he would potentially be facing. And, you know, he said in the interview that those guys like Fury and, and Jennings, they want to take the easy way out going through uh, Vladimir Klitschko as opposed to coming to the young bull, you know. And now it's coming to a point where now you have no choice. Now you're going to have to fight him eventually so you know sometime if you know later this year I would like to see that go down I know he has the rematch with uh, Vlad first so he has to defend yeah, and that's not going to be an yeah, easy exactly. you know, I, I, I'm, I'll be surprised if he wins the rematch to be honest with yeah. you I know he he won that one but Klitschko could most likely regain the title mm -hmm. and I think it'll be a bigger fight for the sport if it's Klitschko versus Deontay as opposed to 
uh, Tyson Fury. Um, you know, even though Klitschko is yeah. the older fighter, he's the more uh, the much bigger name. Tyson Fury has a great uh, Great Britain, uh, you know, you know, fan base and everything. Yeah. So it's a uh, he has a large fan base of his own, but I, I was looking forward to Klitschko versus Deontay. I mean, the fact that Klitschko has that one, that recent loss, kind of takes away from it a little bit. But I think Klitschko will regain the title, and th that's what we'll end up seeing later this year. And you know, Deontay also said that if Tyson Fury lost that fight, he wouldn't even fight him. Like, yeah. So uh, he he ended up getting the belt though against you know, like you said, that he is older, Klitschko. Uh, so in his prime, I don't think either fighter, no disrespect to Deontay, but I don't think either fighter would have been able to beat Klitschko. But uh, regardless, he is getting older, so it's different. And speaking of getting older, we have uh, Peyton Manning getting older and taking a lot of heat out there uh, from the fans on, on him being an old man, kind of comparing <laughs> him to an older uh, Kobe Bryant and how Kobe Bryant yeah. is fading away from talent. But... You know, last year Peyton Manning had a great season. He had a, have a pretty good start to this season too, yeah. but he was playing hurt. It's not just being old. He was yeah. actually playing injured. So that's a, a much different, much different than just being old. You know, playing injured and playing old is two completely different things. Yeah. And you know, we've seen. So look, look at Hasselbeck and his performance yeah, he, recently. You know, forty-two well years old. I mean, everyone wanted to knock Brett Favre. For playing in, into his forties, but I'll take a Brett Favre over Johnny Manziel any day of the week. Like yeah, you know, definitely. I mean, and, or a, a, you know, at least half of the starting quarterbacks out there in the league. So he's still, you know, even in older age, you know, he, he's definitely no slouch. And it's going to be a tough matchup for uh, Tom Brady to win. He hasn't. When it came down to the playoffs, it's been the home team that comes out on top and. Uh, you know, it happened recently with, with the Broncos yeah. uh, against the, the Patriots uh, when, when they eventually ended up losing in the Super Bowl to Seattle. To Seattle. So, I mean, and Denver th it is a tough place to play for, uh, you know, the away teams because of the yeah. altitude there. So uh, it, it's not going to be easy. I'm going to stick with my original Super Bowl prediction of uh, – the Cardinals and the Patriots. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Tom Brady is going to pull it off. He's got Edelman healthy. He's got Gronk healthy. It's it's going to be tough to to you know even with a great defense like the Denver Broncos. Uh, I think it's going to be tough to stop that dynamic offense of New England. What do you think? Yeah, no, I, I gotta agree with you. I mean, first of all, when you, when you look at last week's game versus Steelers, no Antonio Brown, uh, Roethlisberger with the with the the hurt shoulder. And I mean, we had a game pretty yeah. much the the entire time. I mean, Martavius Bryant, he he went off, you know. So if they're doing that without one of the best wide receivers in the game, I gotta you know take the Patriots with Edelman coming back and playing the way he played this past Sunday. Then Gronkowski, and you know Tom Brady still got that chip on his shoulder. I mean, we were still talking about him almost having to miss the first four games of the season with the whole deflate gate scandal. So he's he's coming to play. He's not gonna take this game lightly. I know it's, it's in Denver, but right now I would take Tom. I mean, I would always take Tom Brady over Peyton Manning, but definitely right now I'm taking Tom Brady. Because I mean the Patriots, they're, they're just they're, 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 I think they're better right now. Around I think they can go into uh, Denver and and get the W, and we'll see them in the Super Bowl. All right, Ladybug, any any Super Bowl predictions? Uh, no, none. Around? I just want the food. I just want to know who's cooking, <laughs> what they're cooking, hey, so, so not, I can see. You're not uh, cooking. What? Well, Cause no, because I now I did. See, it. don't don't don't. I'm just start saying. Trip. I'm just saying. You said. <laughs> You had when? said on, you know, mm. that you did cook. Well. So I want to know, are you going to be I cooking cook. for the Super Bowl Sunday? I will. I will. I do. So I do help out. Everyone's at Ladybug's house? No. You see, I or love how you did, did, I love how a question turns into a self-invitation. It's, it's not okay. A, so it's I'm not okay. invited? You gonna cook, but so I'm you're not gonna invited. Say that we're not invited. I yeah. see now. You see now. Oh. You you're gonna oh, block no. your blessing. So Statman is Stat, invited. I'm just not invited. Oh. Now you going to you see you, you turning us okay. against each other because we're what, teammates. No, I see what this is. He trying to break up the no, team. No, no, no. Because no. he felt bad is. about pool. He trying no, to break up the team. I'm not trying to break him. I'm just saying if you cooking, how you gonna not invite us? You get a plate. Statman. I get a plate. I like. We get a plate. I got. I come to the door and you give me a plate and I leave. Yeah. 
Wow. <laughs> you know what? All right. She won't even give it to you. Like, oh, exactly. Yeah. Here. Somebody somebody <laughs> else got to bring it to me. It's all good it's okay. because Serena is planning something. She wanted to do a little Super Bowl party anyway. Oh, I was so going to I was going to invite y'all, but since y'all going to be at Ladybug's house, y'all good. All, all right. right. <laughs> we was going to actually be in Miami, you know, for the Super Bowl, and now you know. She was going to take care of everything, the flight for, for you guys and whatnot. And now it's just like, all right, so now I see where we stand, so it's all good, you know? All right. So I'm just saying. And shout out to Wifey for Lifey because she is still kicking butt right now. She's actually in Australia, in, uh, in Melbourne right now, playing in the Australian Open. But she is breezing through the competition as she usually does. So, you know, anytime I get to shout out Baby Boo, Wifey for Lifey, Serena, keep doing your thing. You know, we trying to break that all-time Grand Slam uh, record. You know, helped by uh, uh, Betting Court. So let's keep on, keep on winning. You know, and um, that's how we going. That's how we going to do it. And I will see you at the Super Bowl party that they will not be invited to. <laughs> boo, you know, uh, before the Super Bowl, we do have Championship Sunday. We have our early game predictions with Brady versus Manning, which is still great to see. No matter how many times we see it, it's always a great. Uh, matchup to see two legends going at it. Now there's also the later game, the NFC Championship, a big matchup, also uh, a one and two uh, battle, uh, and uh, it's in North Carolina. And the Patriots, th they're looking good, but I'm sticking with my original prediction as well. The Arizona Cardinals, I do think it's going to be a close game. Both have dynamic offenses and defenses. So it's going to be a, a tough uh, matchup. Uh, I'm going to give it maybe 24-21 uh, is my prediction with uh, Arizona on top. Yeah, I'm, I'm going with Arizona as well. Um, I mean, the, the Panthers were, were made. First of all, let me say this. They, they were great against the Seahawks. Well, you know, I can't even say they were, great. they were great in the first half anyway. Second half, I mean, giving up 24 points, they couldn't score in the second half. You know that 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 made me kind of think, and they and they lost another starter on on defense. So I'm gonna go with the Cardinals on this one. I'm not gonna give a score, but I'm definitely taking the uh, the uh, the finals, the uh, the Cardinals in this game, and I'm gonna see them in the Super Bowl. And then Tom Too Cool will do his thing once again and get that uh that that fifth. Super Bowl championship ring. I'm looking good in the NFL playoffs fantasy because I picked all Patriots and Cardinals players because if you know how it works, like yeah. every single week as, as they advance, you get doubled and tripled and quadrupled the points mm -hmm. for them. Fitzgerald did great. Edelman, Gronk, Brady. Yeah. Like, I could win a trip to next year's Super Bowl. Um, uh, things are looking good. You know Not too what? many people picked Arizona. I picked them exactly. from the beginning. So, you know. And they're playing really, really well this season. like the sleeper. I was a little disappointed when Chris Johnson got hurt because he kind of revived his career because he had not not played like that for the Jets. And he, he was having a great year before he got hurt. But, you know, Larry Fitzgerald, uh, Malcolm Floyd, those guys, Carson Palmer, was looking like the old Carson Palmer from, from the, the Bengals days when he was torching out there. You know they got they got one of the best defenses in the league with uh, Patrick uh, Peterson mm -hmm. on on the defensive end. So I'm really looking forward to to this this Sunday. And since um, we're gonna have this, uh, we're supposedly we're gonna have this big blizzard. Now we were supposed to be at Bowling for Peace this uh, this mm -hmm. Saturday, but we're gonna be home. So Sunday I'm gonna be in the house, hot chocolate and wings, enjoying <laughs> enjoying football, just relaxing. And I know, I know, you know, the fans. I know y'all a little bit disappointed. I'm disappointed as well. Mm -hmm. We did want to be at the game this Saturday night. Y'all know, real fans, real talk was gonna be in the building, but you know, we can't, we can't stop Mother Nature when she want to come in and, and and show her head. What are we gonna do? So it it will be postponed. The uh, the date is looking like February 6th, yeah. but we're not 100% confirmed just yet. But you know that we'll keep you guys posted. So just keep following us on uh, Instagram and uh, Twitter, Facebook, and we'll keep putting the updates as they come in. But I did speak to Haran. He said the potential date is February 6th. But like mm -hmm. I said, once it's 100% confirmed, we will let you guys know. And you Hopefully know, there's not another blizzard. Uh, yeah, on February uh, 6th, right? that, that'll be so, that so would, mess. Yes, that would be very sad. <laughs> and then it's like, all right, well, now we got to go to the third date. So we'll be having one for peace in June <laughs> when it's warm outside. It might be snowing in June. We don't well, know. With the way things have been going, I, I wouldn't be surprised if that was the that was the case, you know? 
but we, we got some hockey news. Uh, John Scott named to the NHL All-Star Game, which is taking place um, in Nashville uh, next weekend. And the big news about this, for those of you that didn't hear the name John Scott, it's because he's pretty much been a nobody throughout his career. He's got one career goal, 11 career points in like seven <laughs> years. And he was actually um, downgraded to the minor leagues of another organization in a different division. So he was named uh, captain of the team because of fan voting. And that's what's wrong here with fan He's an enforcer, so he's a fan favorite, you know, heavy hitting, you know, type of thing. And uh, But it's just, it's ridiculous what they're doing with these all-star games across the board. Um, you know, basketball with you know the fan voting and everything you got guys who who aren't even playing games and are injured yeah. uh, get being named to the all-star game uh, at least at least this year at least Kobe's playing this year when he got voted to start yeah. at least he's been playing this season they they were trying to really get rid of this guy too which is you know why the trade yeah. was made all oh, now he's technically in a different division so he can't play but you know the they can't really do that to the fans. If, they, yeah. if the fans want to see him play, uh, you don't go and do that. So it's it's being done a little differently this year where with a three-on-three -three, uh, tournament-style game per division. Like you've had – the NHL keeps changing it up where it used to be East versus West, like the NBA. Mm -hmm. Then they did North America versus the world. Then they did, uh, you know, a captain uh, – type of fantasy draft like we're going to see in the Pro Bowl. And now there's a three-on-three -three divisional tournament. So there's four divisions. They're going to play, and then the winning team actually gets like a million dollars or something. So this is this is huge for this guy, too, because his annual salary is in the, the low six figures, yeah. too. Like he's, now, who's going to be on his team, though? Uh, I I mean he's he's going to he he's he's got the option of uh, doing the fantasy draft style on that. Okay. So he, he's got some. I mean, so he could wind up getting with a dream game. team. I know. Yeah. And and, and well, winning a million it's dollars. Gonna be, it's going to be really rough because of that three on three factor. Like you, it's not a traditional five on five. So yeah. Now you got you know you know, three skilled players against two skilled players and one not skilled player. So that's going to be, he's yeah. definitely the weakest link out there, especially on three on three. Like, so <laughs> it's going to be interesting, but you know, only in very fast sports. pace, a lot, a lot of, uh, you know, three on three hockey is going to be, you know, interesting to see. Uh, I like the idea that they changed it up. So we'll see what happens. I'm looking at, I'm actually like the, the pro bowl, uh, being Michael Irvin and Jerry Rice being the captains and doing fantasy draft style with that. Mm. So um, that could be a little bit interesting, too. I but mean, the only thing which is, you know, still with the Pro Bowl. It's before is, the Super Bowl. Yeah, again. one is before the Super Bowl. So you don't get the teams, players from the teams that are in the Super Bowl. And then it's just, it's never a game. Yeah. It's just like, all right, we're just in the park and you just do whatever, whatever you want. Like, I mean, I understand, like, even with, like, basketball, the first three quarters is usually just highlights and whatnot. But it's still, with basketball, it's still even more exciting. And then in the fourth quarter, they'll, they'll turn it up. Baseball, you playing because you want to get that, that home field in the, in the World Series. But with football, it's just like, is there, is, is there any reason to really watch the, the Pro Bowl? I mean, okay, you got your favorite players, but... You don't have all of the players that should be playing on, on in the Pro Bowl because it's before the Super Bowl now. And then they're not even really going hard. So it's like... This is my suggestion with all the All-Star games out there. <coughs> I, I kind of like MLB, first of all, before I make my suggestion. I like MLB how they made a count for something with the World Series. Some yeah. people don't like that. But it makes players play harder because yeah. it does mean something. And it's, for, it's better and for the fans. You, you obviously, you're going to have players from a championship contending team. Yeah. And even if you're, you know, you're fighting for a playoff spot and you're a potential eight seed, nine seed player, you're going to be playing hard too. So I mean, if it's, if they implement that and and the other sports, mm -hmm. home court and the finals, I think that would make it more competitive. On the negative side of that is. 
you know, with the NBA All-Star game, you know, players don't foul and play defense because you don't want to risk injury. So yeah. if you're playing hard now, now all of a sudden injury is a factor and do you want your player playing in the All-Star game? But if so you're playing that, for home for home court in the finals, yeah, then, then you, yeah, you, you do. You do, exactly. So, so I mean, the only thing was, with football, you wouldn't be able to do it too tough because then you'd have to move the Pro Bowl because yeah. you can't do it right before the, the Super Bowl, you know, yeah. is, is, is the week before. And There's not much you could really do with the Pro Bowl, yeah. uh, but... Uh, you know, the other sports, um, as, as far as basketball and hockey are concerned, when it comes to uh, fan voting, I think, you know, the be, getting the fans involved, obviously they, they're, they, they're screwing it up. That's number one. Yeah. But I understand the aspect of it. But what they should do is control the ballots to the people who are uh, eligible. Three players from yeah. each team. Yeah, I think I think that or would something actually, along. You know, three players yeah. from each team. That way, you can't pick if, somebody that's not. Yeah, you have to, you I know. think it should be a minimum game amount uh, of games. Like if you haven't played in, well, I guess. Yeah, so the commissioner or the yeah. coaches or something, <clears throat> put the ballot out there. Yeah. So three players from each team, ninety players out there, and twenty four players make it. Yeah. The fans vote between that, so it's not a complete. You know, Just the bottle like yeah. we're seeing with, with, with John Scott. So, you know, the commissioner's office should ch- send me a check uh, <laughs> I mean, for listen. the Statman f- fixing the game. Hashtag was, Statman's going to fix the game. I agree with <laughs> you 100%. Or something like that. Make a hashtag. Hashtag, hashtag 2016 it. advisor. Yeah. That's how you do it. <laughs> but what are you going to do, Statman? I, I don't know, man. They, they're not trying to cut the check, so we're going to have to... You don't, don't, don't even say no more of your ideas right now because you also had the one... With with the with the, the battle for uh, you know with Eminem you know yeah. the one that gets the battle Eminem we had I'm that just, I'm just putting it out so, there yeah, I got listen, those producer qualities then, too yeah. I'm not just, just I'm just not a cute face behind you know, the camera they, uh, that's a little a slick talker you know exactly I, you gotta wait till you gotta let them have there. them make sure they cut the check first though that man because then they just gonna run with your stuff. And, you know, who wants uh, that? I'll hold back for a bit. But <laughs> exactly. Uh, another commissioner um, situation, Andre Drummond, uh, 24 fouls, league uh, all-time record. Yeah. Um, they're, try- they're trying, you know, some people are speaking out to the commissioner to change the rules here. Well, they have changed it, changed it uh, you know, somewhat, which you can't after the... The uh, two minute mark, you can't yeah. just foul, you know, anybody. But at, listen, I, the way I feel about it is, at the end of the day, is if you make your free throws, then it doesn't matter anyway. Yeah, like just all, make your free throws. There's a handful of guys out there, you know, that are, are big men that can't make their free throws. Yeah, he's one of them. I mean, <laughs> it like, started with Hack a Shack, and that rhymed. And yeah. That sound, then it went. It's hack then they had the bang, banger Ben when they was fouling Ben yeah. Wallace. They had the banger Ben. So, you know, listen, but if you make it free but throws. But not Hacker Drummond, that's not even the come up with Yeah, something. like it's not, it's not, you know, it's not cool. Dinger like, Drummond, like, I don't know. Yeah. Like, but, I, don't, I don't know, but listen, like I said, you got to make your free throws at the end of the day. If you're making your free throws, we don't even have this discussion. That's one of the, that's one of the risks of having a guy out there. Like, you know, Shaq is such a beast and all these guys are such dominant forces. You know, fouling was one of the main options to stop them. That's, that's yeah. you know, uh. That's why Phil Jackson's uh, Bulls during, you know, the, the 72 and 10 season, they had, you know, four big centers who, who weren't that great. But, you know, that's, uh, you know, that's a bunch of fouls out there. That's yeah. what they were there for, to, to go up against guys like Shaq. Like, you have all those guys that are there specifically to foul, yep. you know, these guys to, to be, you know... Hey, listen. If you and if if you're doing with Shaq, there's most of the time when they did the hack of Shaq, it really didn't matter because he was so dominant anyway. The Lakers were still winning, so it really didn't matter. I mean, you know, three championships during that that Shaq and and Kobe era, they were still one of the most dominant teams in basketball. So it really didn't matter because you weren't stopping Shaq anyway with with those flashes. Plus, it came to a point where Shaq would still make you know a couple of those anyway. So if he's still making them, plus he's still scoring 28, 29, 30 you know points a game. You know, it, it like it, it evens out. In yeah, the way. exactly. It's not things like... kind of kinda <laughs> balance out. Now, in a situation where you know Andre Drummond, he's just not making any of them. I mean, yeah, you know, it sucks, but they actually still wound up getting yeah. the, getting the win in that game. So you know, everything kind of still worked out. But like I said, you don't you can't uh, depend on that. Holler at Ray <laughs> Allen and, and ask I mean, some free throw help. One of the one of the suggest. <laughs> well, I mean, it's different for big guys. You, you see it happening with big big guys for a reason because. You know, the, the, you got to put an arc on the ball, and yeah. when you're taller, 
it's harder to to put that same arc as like a you know six foot one Listen, guy. Listen, they could do the underhand. That's why, you know, the grandma mom that's, side. That's with, why people like that. the like, ladybug you know, shot. Yeah. And, <laughs> and guys who are like six foot one or so, you know, shorter guys make you know, are it's a lot easier for yeah. them, a different arc. So the taller taller guys have more difficulty with it. There are some big men that could shoot free throws, but usually yeah. you know they're the big men are a lot lower percentage for that reason. But yeah. Shaq was coached for so long. He would take so many free throws. Yeah, you think after like a while, was, like... You, it's not like he didn't have the work ethic and didn't like, yeah. oh, I don't want to do free throws. Like, they just, tried over yeah, and over again. wasn't just, good at, at, at making no shots. I mean, you got, you know, guys like Dirk, who's a seven-footer. You know, he can make he makes his free throws. You know, there's a couple of centers that were, were pretty good. David Robinson actually was one of those guys. Was pretty good. Uh, Pat could make his for the for the most part. Pat Dorley from uh, yeah. The Pistons. But it, you know, it's just you know, it's, there's a lot of big men that just can't make free throws. And like I said, yeah, it sucks. But at the end of the day, you're standing at the line with nobody guarding you, and you're what? It was ten feet from the from the basket. So if you don't make those free throws, it's on you. You better do something else to assure that your team wins that game. You know, and I mean, he did have a have a double double, and like I said, the Pistons still won. Like I said, with Shaq, you know, what I mean, they still had three chips back. You know, the three peat. You know, so. As long as as long as you're doing something else to make up for that for those free throws that you're gonna miss, you know it is what it is. One of the suggestions out there was to make it uh, where you have the option of either shooting the free throws or taking the ball, and I don't like that at all. I think yeah. that's ridiculous because you, then you're making that's you're making that dominant player even more dominant, even though he can't hit some of the fun. You know, it's yeah. a fundamental part of the game. If you can't do it, then that's your weakness. Like having the advantage of being a good free throw shooter is something that makes you a better player. Now it's like, oh, you implement that rule, and now the you know, younger people, oh, free throws aren't that important. If you suck yeah, at it, right, exactly. then, you know. And but, yeah, you know, yeah, you're absolutely right. So, I mean, you know, they're going to come up with a whole bunch of suggestions. I doubt anything is going to change because you, you can't take away the foul shots. I mean, that's just a part of part of basketball. You're just going to have to keep working at it's it. It's boring to watch. It slows down the game and all that, but it's a part of the game. Uh, we got another fan mail question since we're on basketball. Uh, Dennis was asking about the the recent uh, best all time by position that was recently announced. Magic Johnson at a point guard, Michael Jordan at shooting guard, uh, LeBron James at small forward. Tim I know Duncan. that pains you to say that. <laughs> I seen the face. I, it's not my opinion. Know. You see how it's face? I, 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 I can't notice that. But just the fact that you have to say that about LeBron, I know it hurts. <laughs> I don't agree with it, so it's not an official, you know, accurate statement. It's not in the stat man book, okay? Yeah, exactly. So it's what they you say. It's not what it's not in the <laughs> You're the biggest LeBron hater this side of Skip Baylor, so we know you're not going to do with that. <laughs> That's true. Um, power forward Tim Duncan and center Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Um, now... The question was, do we agree <laughs> with it? And Le I think you know, LeBron James is the only active player on that list. Well, the Tim Duncan, who's pretty much on his way out, you can't really call that too active. Yeah. But, um, but Future Hall of Fame. Flute, right? I mean, I agree with Tim Duncan, no question yeah. about that. And the fact that he's he's doing doing so well at the age that he's playing now is just uh, phenomenal in itself. Um, but LeBron James, I don't agree with. I'm going Larry Bird with that. Maybe when LeBron James' career is done, I, I might be uh, convinced otherwise. Uh, I know Carmelo Anthony just recently passed Larry Bird on the all-time scoring list. Larry Bird didn't play as many years, but uh, I don't think uh, playing that many years is a qualification for greatest of all time because people being drafted out of high school now as opposed to, to back then where... You know, Larry Bird actually was drafted a year in advance uh, just so that they could have that pick. So mm -hmm. you, you're talking about going a year without even having the player and, and drafting him. So the, uh, that's how good he was. And as far as early years, his stats surpassed LeBron James. There's the factor of, uh, you know, instead of being a crybaby, he was a, a tough guy and he would get in your head. So the the, the psyche of the game, he had that. Um and he was, he was up there with Magic Johnson, but when you're talking about the point guard position, I go with Oscar Robinson, who I still think is the most underrated player in NBA history. Uh, he only player to 
average a triple double in a season that is entire history nobody else has ever done it and he did it and he was just great all around uh so oscar robertson over magic magic a uh, close second in that department because i don't want to take anything away from magic he was great um you know the way he would pass and you know his personality and everything just everything about magic johnson was great um Shooting guard, I'm going to go with Kobe instead of Jordan. No, <laughs> let me stop there. <laughs> you was going to be on your own. Everybody. I, 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 was, I, just stop, like. I almost walked off the set when you, did, when you said that. Man. I, I almost did. I almost did. I just wanted to throw, throw something out there to change things up. but mm -hmm. um, I think as far as the list goes, I'm actually I'm good with the five. If you, if you wanted to switch uh, Kareem with Bill Russell, I'd be okay with that too. Uh, because you know, either, either way, I think. But um, as far as a small forward goes, I'm definitely with LeBron. I mean, it, what he's accomplished now, you know, in comparison to Larry Bird, who who is one of the greatest of all time. Not taking anything away from from Larry Bird, but I mean, you got a four-time MVP in LeBron James. You know, Bird had the edge in in championships right now, three to two. But I mean, I mean, we, when you go by them all-time lists, I mean, LeBron is pretty much breaking every record as far as climbing those lists uh, with, with points, rebounds, you know, and assists. Yeah, I mean, so, he's drafted out of high school. So when you're talking about all-time lists, he's not a points per game and assists per game and rebounds per game. That's a whole different. That that's what you're going by. Then not you know because he came out of high school and is going to play more years. Well, I but, mean, as far as on the list, like we're talking about right now, at 30 years old, LeBron at the end of this season will be in the top 10 all time in scoring. Yeah. Like you can't you can't deny that. I mean, it just you know his, his dominance four years to on, that. on that's the game. Four years old. That's when people are on their way out at that point. And he got you know being able to start younger. You know you have more prime years too than you know than than other players, and you have more total years. So yeah, but I mean, it's not like you know Larry Bird. If he gets came out to Kareem Abdul-Jabbar's record, then I'll you know be like, well, okay, it's that's actually, like, up. It's not. It's, <laughs> well, well, okay, he has to get to Kareem's level <laughs> in order to for him to be the best small forward in the game. No, nah, I, I don't. I don't think so. I, I think he is right now, and he's still you know he can. He actually has a chance to get to Kareem's record. I'm not saying he's going to do it or, or not, but he definitely has a chance. He's he's actually climbing the the ranks pretty fast. And like I said. I mean, at 30, if he if he plays another you know another six seven years, he'll be close to uh, to breaking that record. But I mean, just everything that that LeBron has has done in his career, I'm going with LeBron. I'm I'm okay with that right now, and it's only going to get get even. The, the the you know the space between him and Bird is going to be even even wider once you know his career is, is complete. So I'm cool with the with the list the way it is. Magic, I mean, five championship rings from Magic. Somebody that could play one through five and did play one through five. I mean, you can't you can't go wrong with Magic. As much as I like Oscar Robinson, you know, as well, you know, like triple double for a season. Nobody's ever done that. I don't think anybody will do it again. But I'm still going with with Magic on on that one. And I mean, obviously, MJ is the, the greatest of all time. So you gotta you gotta go there. Um, now we're going, we're going, cause we got Ladybug here and I want, I know Ladybug has some stuff under her sleeves what do you this mean? week no, I with don't. the rumor mill. So no. we're going to just jump, <laughs> we're just going to jump right in and uh, like, let us know what's going on. You're not here just for the pretty face. Well, I, come on. Things, I was like about. enjoying the lights and I was looking no. at myself and I was gotta, seeing all myself all glowing. Look, look, yeah. look like at this. Like this yeah, looks nice know. right now. Y'all know you guys like it. you work. We putting you to work. Oh man. They okay. have. They've been writing. It. I, you know, I didn't even give you the fan mail from the fans. They've been complimenting you. You know, oh my on gosh, the for the, and for the, oh yes, my gosh, have, thank you. Know, you. With, you know the whole Amber Rose thing that you had going on. It was great, on. and I loved they, it. It was I gotta, a great. You know what, like, I gotta send you the mail because you actually got a bag of fan mail. Just for, they don't even write myself and Fat Man <laughs> as much as they used to. Yeah, hate mail on both. Yeah, oh now, gosh, they just everything is all about Ladybug right now. So stop it. But thank you guys. I really <laughs> appreciate it. You guys got me blushing. You see now I can't. I can't start. Anyway, no, <laughs> let me get straight into it. I'm so glad you guys are still tuning in with me. Um, had to start off with my BFF, with my Miss Ronda Rousey, because she is 
having a rematch with Holly Holmes. It is happening later this year. I am excited for it. Um, even though she did lose, um, I'm excited. It's just Holly Holmes really uh, came back and, and told her, you know, I don't mind fighting you, but I have to know your passion is still in it. She believes that with all the endorsements and all the movie roles and all the entertainment, she's, you know, she's not, her passion's not into fighting anymore. She feels like it's more into her being an actress. So she says that, you know, she, she, she will fight her if she wants to fight, but she wants to fight a passionate fighter. She doesn't want to fight somebody that's fighting for the lights and for the cameras. So, um, I want to see the fight. I feel like, you know, Rhonda's, you know, I feel like she needed to get that, you know, quote unquote bubble popped. And now that, you know, she's BFF. Draw popped. <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. I'm, I'm just saying that is my BFF, but sometimes we need to get knocked that down so we can get up, <laughs> even um, if it's she, literally. She definitely so, got knocked down, knocked so, out. Um, I feel like I saw, uh, you know, Chris Tucker standing over her. After she got knocked out, <laughs> obviously we can't say exactly what he said on We're the air. We don't want to get kicked the off line. the air. But, but it, I think it just put the fire under her butt. So it's like, okay, now uh, she's going to come back. I think she knows what she's getting into now. But, um, yeah, Holmes is just like, you know, I just want to fight someone who's passionate about fighting because she did get uh, signed for two more movie roles. And uh, now it's like, okay, is she really doing this to be a fighter or is she just doing it to get her 15 minutes of fame? And it's kind of like a low blow. Well, not really 15 minutes of fame. Well, been, yeah, but... She's had her 15 if that's uh, what I'm saying, it's, months of fame. <laughs> yeah, it's just... Months, I even feel like that. it's more of a low blow. Like, she's like, well, you know, I'm only going to fight I mean, her if she's really passionate. And I'm I, like, I think that all, that all sounds good and everything, but I think she'll fight her regardless of... Because if she fights somebody else, the paycheck's not going to be as big. Yeah. So you're going to fight her no matter what her reason is for fight yeah. you, you, you could say that all you want uh but of course you know Rhonda's not fighting just you know for like her passion was fighting like she's doing all that because why not like exactly. you know like my passion is talking about sports but you want to put me in the movie I'll exactly. be in there you yeah, know what yeah. I'm saying like no problem <laughs> so uh, well, no so, I, I agree 100%. and I, I, I agree as far as you know sometimes the what you said about getting knocked down or, you know, getting popped to get back up or whatever. I think, you know, Rhonda's ego was way above her head. And I'm, I was always a huge fan. But when I saw the, the weeks going into the fight, her saying, oh, well, Holly Holmes, you know, said this will be the biggest payday of her career. Yeah. And she could, she could be happy with that check. She's going to lose and everything. But, she, you know, some people can't handle the championship like the the everything that comes along with it, all these interviews and uh, you know all the attention. Some people just can't handle it, so she should just be happy taking her check and moving on or whatever, and, and not even shaking, not even touching gloves. Or bef yeah, right before yeah, just the fight not started. common courtesy. It was yeah. just too cocky, and like I said, I I just feel That's like now she why. could come in smarter. I She's tell you guys be... every week when we come on this show that I'm down with the money team. Okay. Now, as much as I want to see this fight go down, Ronda, I feel like she's going to lose again because of the oh. fact that she's taking on all these movie roles and doing all this extra stuff outside of MMA and training for, for that next fight with, with Holly Holm. I don't know where her mindset is, is going to be at, if she's going to be ready. And that girl, Holly, you know, she has some hands on her. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and some feet. And some feet. <laughs> we, and, uh, we seen the video. Ronda met both of them, you know, they know each other <laughs> on a first name basis. <laughs> so I'm still I'm still going with with, with Holly on, on on this one too. So yeah, so talking about your money team, that's right. Because uh, you know I gotta go <laughs> into my. I feel like you know ever since not, ever since I've been here, I've been talking yeah, about been, Mayweather yeah. and Ronda. They've been my two favorites. Yeah, those are your go-to. <laughs> I'm kind of stalking them low key, I guess. But um, <laughs> <laughs> it's all good as long as you don't get caught. It's all good. <laughs> Don't get caught in the bushes. Oh man, but yeah, like I said, another another update to the whole Mayweather versus the world. But it's still the whole Conor McGregor and the whole controversy they have about you know what was being said and the comments and the backlash. Basically, Conor McGregor came back again after Mayweather, um, and basically he's you know he's telling him just watch what you say before you say it because people you know 
quote unquote people get buried in the desert for less than that. He was just talking about, uh, you know, Mayweather's <laughs> remarks about the whole, you know, them being both very cocky athletes, but one gets, you know, praised and the other gets, you know, their name drugged through the dirt. And, um, you know, McGregor's just like, I don't appreciate that. You know, if you were anybody else, you probably would have got a whole nother treatment. So I'm just saying. You know, that as much as you me, love mon money team. But that shocks me that he would say, say if he was anybody else, he would get a different treatment. I'm, I'm trying to figure out what treatment would he be getting because we are talking about one of the best fighters in the world. The you know the number one pound for pound. So I don't understand what is he saying about this. A if different he treatment? maybe if he wasn't if he wasn't number one pound for pound. If he if he doesn't like if he have couldn't, the if he couldn't fight like I don't maybe. understand like where, like where's he going with this one and then two. You, now you talking about people being buried in the desert like I don't know like what's going on with him right now. Listen, you're talking about some mafioso. Yeah, stuff like that's that's a little bit different. Plus Mayweather's the one that's in Vegas like that all the time. So if anything, well, that's why he's you know, buried <laughs> but because listen, the desert's right there. Yeah, if, if if you're not if you're not challenging Floyd Mayweather to a boxing fight, I don't even want to hear nothing else from Conor McGregor on the subject. Like I think he needs to just let it go unless he's going to step into the ring and and have Mayweather break the record in a boxing match with him. On uh, Cinco de Mayo. Like you said, well, so, it's two different things. It's boxing and it's MMA. Yeah. So. Some people like, you know, the cockiness, but it depends on it. Like, you know, like, I'm a fan of Mayweather's cockiness. I'm a fan of Kobe Bryant's cockiness. It depends on what you say and how you present yourself. Sometimes I find it funny. Conor McGregor, actually, I, I heard recently in this press conference, I'm not sure if you guys heard this, but... Uh, he went out and he, he said, uh, yeah, I, I respect Jesus. You know, I respect all gods and, you know, gods uh, recognize gods. And I'm like, whoa, slow down that turbo. <laughs> trying to say you're a god? Yeah. Like, you need to, like, slow down there a little bit. Listen, like, I, I, don't know, I don't know what's going on with him, but. I mean, you, you take a lot of hits to the head. You say some stupid things every now yeah, and then. Yeah, so I guess, you know, you're gonna, I guess we'll, we'll give him a pass. But he's definitely jumping out the window right now. And I don't want to hear nothing else about it unless and he's talking about fight. fighting Mayweather in a boxing match. I don't want to hear about, oh, I want you to fight me in an MMA. I'm, no, I don't want to hear that. If you're that tough, then you fight Mayweather in, in a boxing ring. And if you win then, then I, you know, I'll tip my hat. You the man. There's nothing else needs to be said. But obviously, that's I mean, not going to happen. We might see that as Mayweather's last fight. It's listen. I'm all for that. It's definitely, you know, it can happen. It and can it will happen. Be, it will be. It'll definitely it'll be, be Conor McGregor's biggest payday ever. No <laughs> Talking about, about that. that. And uh, just on to boxing. You know, uh, Usher has been under the radar for a few, and it's because he's been training to play Sugar Ray Leonard in a biopic. And I was kind of like shocked, because me, you know, growing up, Usher as the artist, as the singer, you know, R&B, that was just singing to my soul. And then I come to find out, you know, he's going to play Sugar Ray Leonard. You know, the, the film is going to be called Hands of Stone. And um, he's been training for two years, and he just spoke about it. He said, you know, he didn't want to feel like he was an actor he wanted to feel like a boxer he wanted to just take that whole essence of Sugar Ray Leonard's legacy and just embody it and it was something that you know like I said me having so much respect for Usher as an artist for him to take on this role <laughs> I was just astonished because you know I've been missing him for two years you know I've been missing the music and so now he was you know because you, you was you was jonesing to Usher and then now you know he's going to be in the boxing match, so you might get to see him in I the would, boxing I, would, show I still sing whatnot. to Usher in uh -oh. my head and in my, in my dreams. I still sing I guess we're going to be talking about Mayweather the next couple of weeks. I mean, about Usher <laughs> the next me. couple of weeks no. on the, uh, on don't the get show the now. Bushes. Yeah, don't, don't get caught in the bushes now. <laughs> he's married. I have to. I can't. I got to be more stealthy with it now. I can't, right. I can't just be at the window. I got to oh, okay. be. You know, I probably keep it through social media. That's it. <laughs> okay. Double tap every picture. It goes picture down like it. in the DM. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> just say, all right. All right. <laughs> I mean, listen, I don't want I want to hear no complaints from Usher's representatives to the letters to real fans, real talk now, Ladybug. Right? No, but definitely they they're looking to release the film, uh, you know, towards the end of uh, this year. So I'm definitely excited for that. So definitely look out for the promo. Like I said, Hands of Stone. It sounds really good. Yeah, that's and, what's um, up. Because Usher's actually a pretty good actor. Like I I don't think I've seen him in something. And I was like, oh, he's horrible. Like, I always thought he was pretty good in, in the roles that he played, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. Plus, he's playing Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, one of the greats, 
So I, I, I want to see how they uh, put the spin on the whole no mouse fight the, with that. I think it's the smooth. I think it's the suave. See, here you go. This had. is not. I'm see, sorry. You know, this is this is why, all right, sometimes, you know, women, y'all got to separate yourselves a little bit from sports because y'all looking for the wrong reasons. You know how like you watch the game with a female and they be like, oh, look at his look at his pants and whatnot. I don't want to hear that when I when I'm watching. Right, so the that you game. can't come to my house in the Super Bowl because I'd be like, you, oh, look at that. You know, well, oh, exactly. That's oh. already been made clear. At least I'm, I'm cooking coming. though, so at least you yeah. But I'm be not going to be able to find out how, if the food, you know, if it was good. You get your plate point. outside. It's okay. <laughs> I'm not. I'm not coming. I'm being Miami with wifey boo. Oh you yeah. Know? Shout out to wifey boo After again. After the game's Serena. done, too. I, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be cool. That's why I'm not doing it because I don't. I don't like the way you treat me on that whole situation there and it's all good it's you know right. stat man i hope you enjoy yourself at lady one's house it's I all right i'll invite there. usher <laughs> you just for the say he was married now you're gonna invite a, a married i can invite him and his wife his i'm being no, i'm being you didn't say his wife okay you said you was gonna invite usher don't try to clean it up now okay all right I, all right anyway. let us will be coming in from usher's representative i'll take the soon. wife to hook things up oh, you see, 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 that's, awesome. that's <laughs> teamwork makes the dream work listen you talking about a married y'all some home records okay <laughs> both of y'all it's in home records y'all need to stop all right team home records exactly hashtag no hashtag, team no, hashtag. no we hashtag it now Two no, home I, records over here. But, but those are uh, my <laughs> my room of I can't even finish. Those are my topics for the week. I just really want to take time out and say happy birthday to my mom. Today is my mom's birthday. Happy birthday, mommy. I love you. And I told you I was going to give you a very special shout out. So happy birthday, mommy. Many more. I love you. Happy birthday. And this is special. Like, I love this. It's, it's, it's your mom's birthday. Yes. Because she is a Yankees fan. So it makes yes, it that much she better. Is a Yankees so fan. happy birthday so. to, uh, to mama, mama Bug. Yeah. And uh, we wish you many, many more. And... The the Yankees are still in the, in the top three. I and, can't uh, say happy on birthday the to mom list. too. You see? So, yo, Statman, Statman, <laughs> Statman, everybody gotta wow. give, give, give the love, guys, Statman. Well, you just took it away. <laughs> no, you still gotta go, Statman. Happy birthday, uh, Mama Bug. All right. All right, Mama Bug. <laughs> and, but is, is she a Knicks fan too, or what? No. Yeah, no. Sorry, right. Statman. So Nobody's just, a Knicks fan. Yankees, uh, no one's a Knicks fan, Statman. No. Sorry, bro. But Knicks, Knicks uh, are <laughs> on the top of the Forbes list for uh, basketball teams, and they are fourth uh, on uh, USA sports franchises uh, behind the, the Cowgirls, the uh, Yankees, and the Patriots. Patriots, yes. And on top of that, the artist formerly known as uh, Snuffleupagus, my man Christophs Porzingis, mm -hmm. his jersey is actually yes. outselling Kevin Durant. He's number four in jersey sales. So we might have KP in that small forward hey, position. And listen, of LeBron. I <laughs> well, would he's be mad. Yeah, but. If, if, if it was in New York, they might have made it. They might have made it happen. Yeah, but uh, I, but I no, but shout out to uh, <laughs> shout out to Porzingis, man. Yo, he's doing his thing this he season, is. and he's, he's doing, doing checks. Man. He's getting them checks. That's what that's what happens. One thing, you know, I will say the Knicks suck, but when you play in the garden, wow. you're in one of the biggest uh Don't get you know, him a jersey. The, the now. Biggest uh, markets. <laughs> you know, so you really have a chance to to capitalize and, and maximize on, on, on your, your your revenue generated. So he's doing it right now and you know, he's doing it in fashion. I mean the putback jams that he's been doing this season is exciting. He can hit the three, he can step out. He's playing defense, you know, he's blocking shots. And right now, you know, I got him in the front for, for rookie of the year. So, yeah. I mean, we, you know, you can't say anything about Porzingis. It sucks that he's playing on the and Knicks. He's tall. And they haven't won in over 40 <laughs> years. But All those Knicks fans with the mellow jerseys booing him when he got drafted, and now they're mm -hmm. buying KP jerseys. Exactly. So it's good to see. Good for him. Shout out to glad, Phil for getting that one right. Glad he went out there and showed his stuff off. Like, uh, obviously, uh, not much of a risk in Phil Jackson's mind. He just had to listen to the way people uh, talk negatively about the situation. But obviously picking him up, huge improvement from last year. Um, and the Knicks uh, playoff team this year. So. And we're just waiting for the magazine center for ladies. I know that's what we're waiting for. You see what I mean? This is, this is why. I have to appeal to the female oh viewers. I, I, I just this, have to say it. This is why you're going to be downgraded from the starting line. <laughs> you're going to put yeah. me back. It's all right. You're going back to it's the all right. I'm a showstopper. Because, no, because you're, because you're up here, you know, you're trying to break up happy homes. Oh, my okay? God. You just Don't tried do to, that. You just tried to take Usher Don't from his wife. That. Okay, now, you know, I don't know what's going on with you. And on top of that, you you know, you didn't invite me to a Super Bowl party. Oh, my god! So, gosh. I feel I feel hurt behind that. 
you know. So, but yeah, it's a lot yeah. of personal problems. You hear? You hear it is, but you know what? I'm through? just, I'm just saying. It's all right. You but know. you won pool, though. You had to make that known, I, right? Well, you just brought it back up. I didn't no, even say I'm just that, saying. That was at the I'm top gonna of the program. I'm going to let you finish. That was at the top of the we, program. We got a little recap. Listen, it's okay. That was at the but, top uh, of the program. I didn't want right. to bring that up. And next you time, next again. time, we're going to definitely uh, bring, the, bring, the, bring the cameras out Listen, for the real fans, real talk. I, I, I perform better anyway when the cameras is, is out, so I'm not, I'm not worried about that. Okay. You know? Listen, I'm here. I guys, ain't going nowhere. Make sure you guys you know? stay tuned because we're going to set this listen, one up. As Uncle Rob told it... y'all at the beginning of the program, we ain't going nowhere. We're going to be right here. You know? <laughs> so y'all just better. Make sure, first of all, make sure y'all. Well, not necessarily right here, but we'll yeah, be. Yeah, but we'll be somewhere. We're going to yeah. be here. We ain't going nowhere, though. But um, <laughs> make sure y'all y'all stay tuned in. RealFansRealTalk.com. Mm -hmm. Hit us up on Facebook, Facebook.com forward slash RealFansRealTalk. Twitter, Instagram, at Real Fan Talk. And make sure y'all subscribe to that YouTube channel, yes. uh, youtube.com forward slash For The Fans Productions. And if y'all want to just chop it up with us, y'all can also hit us in the group chat on uh, on Facebook. We always going back and forth during the week. And, you know, we keep you guys updated on, on what's going on in sports during the week. So make sure that you guys are following us mm -hmm. because, um, I mean, we, we just, you know, we in the know right now. And, uh, oh, don't forget, ladies and gentlemen, Balling For Peace has been postponed. It will not be going down this Saturday. It's still going to be at your college. The The potential date is February 6th. But like, as I said earlier in the program, as soon as we get 100% confirmation from uh, H2O, we will let you guys know. It will be on the Facebook uh, fan page. Mm -hmm. It will also be posted on the Instagram page. So make sure you're following us at Real Fan Talk. And we're going to jump into the final thought segment with that being said, Ladybug. <laughs> I hope, uh, you know, Trip Young is in a better mood next week to try and talk about my faults anyway. I'm no, I'm joking. No. <laughs> Just make sure you guys definitely stay tuned. I always have the gossip of what's going on. Make sure you guys follow me. And, um, yeah, I'm here. Like you said, I'm here. What's that, man? <laughs> All right. Congratulations to Ladybug on the pregame. That's yes, my final Fridays. thought. Um, we had the post game after the pregame, and we still got it. Me and the stat uh, man, we time. we here. It's all right. I don't, I don't like how this is going on right. Y'all team home records right now. I'm not feeling <laughs> this right now. All right, but I am gonna. I'm gonna use my final thought to to let the, let the people know that you should be listening tomorrow night from uh, 6 to 8 p.m. on soundcast.fm to the pregame if you're not already Copying doing Copying my that. final thought. I'm just saying. That's how, right. that's how I do from time but to time. But definitely okay? shout out to my You girls, didn't copy right that. Stush and Zena <laughs> that's going to be with me every Friday from 6 to 8 for the pregame. I hope you guys definitely tune in. It's much more of this, but, you know, without the guys. So. That's how you feel? It's you just, fine. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> no, right, no, no, no. I see what I see. Uh, uh, a Knicks fan's pours for president. Uh, <laughs> since, since, since we got the jersey sales, you know, I'm not liking Donald Trump or any of these other candidates. So, hey. Porzingis is for president. Hey. He's, he's too young. Young, though. You gotta be 35. <laughs> oh, man. It's all good. Hashtag pours for Prez. It is what it is. <laughs> Sounds good. But we will see you guys next week for myself, Trip yes. Young, Ladybug, Mark the Statman, Skevich. Real fans, real talk. Check us out, man. We here. Good night. Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Dom is trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro, Mark the Stats, man. If you're not tuned in, I recommend the CAT scan. And if your brain checks out, then you deserve a backhand. Sports, gossip, all the hot topics. Real fans, real talk.com. Got it. They got the hottest bloggers. Did Jeremy Lynn hurt? We'll log on to the site and you can hear it from them first. Real fans, real talk.com. Well, Arthur Dom is trip young and intern time for the white and black fans. Asia to Manhattan. I'll get all my facts from my bro.